Hey guys, Crewman here. Hope you missed me. It's been a busy week. It's been a busy weekend to say the least. And we have another new miner dropped. It seems like we get a new one every few days. 1-0 Miner's latest update, 1.3.7. Now I know they dropped an update this weekend to allow them to mine Zealous version 2, or Zealous 2.0 as I'm going to call it. But I was not here to test it as I had to unplug. So this is my first test of Rigel Miner versus 1.0 Miner. So I'll be testing 1.3.7 versus 1.18. And the results are definitely interesting. So, without further ado, let's get to it. Crypto Miner Bros is your one stop shop for all your ASIC needs. From smaller home ASICs, which is what I personally recommend, you know, my personal favorite is the Jazz Miner X16Q, and another one that I just did a video review on, the KS0 Ultra, which, you know, low risk, low reward, is the perfect kind of home ASIC that I would look into to branch into ASIC mining. Prices are all shipped to your door, and if you use Croupman, you get $70, $70 off your first KS0 Ultra purchase, and I think it works with other ASICs as well, for a total of $380 shipped to your door. If you're looking for ASICs, Crypto Miner Bros is your one-stop shop for all your ASIC needs. All right, so how I'm going to do this, I'm going to do a quick breakdown. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to show you a single 3070 on 1.3.7 and then 1.1.8, and I will show you the GUI and I will show you its power consumption. And then once I show you that and you can see the differences and I'll go over them, I'm going to show you farm wide the difference between all the 30 series and all the 40 series I own. Right, so here is the 3070 on Rigel Miner, and you can see I have the PDM right there. Uh, the one thing I want you to notice is the power fluctuation. It really only goes from like 97 to like 105, and we're showing an average power usage on the software at 97. Now I'm wondering if this is just getting the average, or obviously it's not taking into account the power fluctuation, which is what I wanted to show you. The point is Rigel Miner 1.18 is very stable, and I'm getting about 25 kilohash for 97 watts at an efficiency curve of about 256. Now I didn't go pure efficiency for my 3070s at launch because I just wanted to get as much hash as I could, but well, I probably will go pure, pure efficiency in the future. Now, without further ado, let's take this to the new Rigel or the new 1.0 miner, and you can see exactly what we're getting. All right, now you can see I've got the 3070 up with the same exact settings on 1.0. Uh, one thing I did for all of the 30 series, I used the same exact settings. And you can see here that we are getting a lot better efficiency at about 284 and we are getting a lot more hash at 29.87 kilo hash and we're only using 105 watts but what I want you to look at and what I think is important to consider if you want to make the jump from Rigo to 1-0 and makes it kind of not a guaranteed you should use 1-0 over Rigel look at this power fluctuation we're going from about 93 watts all the way to about 120 watts now it goes really fast or no, it looks like it's about 110 watts, but it goes really fast, and I have it larger up here so that you can see it. So if you are running, A, if you're running close to the margins, B, your power supplies are close, or C, you are, are close to maxed, or C, you really don't like this much fluctuation, I definitely would consider not going over to 1-0. Over now, the efficiency is definitely there, and you'll especially notice it during the 40 series, but you do need to take into consideration that this is going to happen. There is a lot wider of a range, and also, I had some issues where occasionally some overclocks didn't seat, and I'd have to make sure that, and I'd have to reset them. So, that is something that I would be very careful about as well. Now, I'm not running any of my circuits anywhere close to capacity, even in this hot weather, so I am okay with this, but I wanted you guys to see this. And again, you ha I will make a note when I saw an overclock that didn't reset. And I did follow all of these through the Zill settings, like I followed all of my GPUs through their Zill windows, and both of them did the transition perfectly. All right, so without further ado, let me show you all of the other comparisons. All right, the first one is my 3060 Ti rig. Ignore the Zill settings. I've just been a little conservative with my Zill OCs. Um, but you will see the 3060 Ti right here. This is using the latest Rigel Miner, 1.18. And you can see I'm getting about 25 kilohash, and you can see the watts. Now let me show you in Miner settings. 
Uh, I will always use Rigel on the top and 1-0 on the bottom so you can see the comparisons. But the first thing you see is the efficiency. It's about 234 on average. You can see the average below the 12. And to get the power, I just kind of, you know, I basically just do the averages. So you can see the 3060 Ti right here. And then down here next to me, right <laughs> right over here, you can see the uh, 1.0, the latest version. And you can definitely see the efficiency differences here. Um, definitely noticeable. You go from 234 to 261. And as far as the power goes, you generally, you're using a little bit more power, but you are getting more hash we're going from 25 to 28 and you're getting more efficiency performance and for me efficiency is the big thing so i can stomach that the reason i focus on the 3070 and the 3060 ti so much is this is basically what you're going to see and what's very important to note for the 30 series you're going to see that uh for basically the same overclock settings we're going to use a tiny bit more power but we're going to get more hash and we're going to be more efficient so let me get you the 30 series chart right now all right, so here is my 30 series comparisons. I basically did every model but the 3080 Ti, as I don't own one anymore, and the 3090 Ti, but the 3090 will give you basically those results for those two. All right, so we'll look at the 3070 and the 3060 Ti first. You can notice that they use a little bit more power for a little bit more hash and a little bit more efficiency. So. Now, I do want to report that I did have a reboot on my 3060 rig. The overclocks didn't catch it first, so it's something you have to be careful of. And you have to remember that the power at the software is generally the, the I guess it's like the average. The 3070 Ti, I noticed that you use more power, you get more efficiency, and you get more hash. But the power usage over my 530, or my 63070 Ti's wasn't that bad, so that was worth noting. The 3080 and the 3090 got a pretty decent improvement especially the 3090 if you look at the improvement in hash it used only 20 more watts and the efficiency bump was pretty pretty big if you ask me uh, the 36 the 3080 noticed a smaller efficiency jump but again I would use both of those on one zero minor the efficiency jump is very nice the 3060 non TI gave you quite a big non efficient jump for almost no power increase but the wattage increase or the hash rate increase was low. But again, these are all the same overclocks as I had on Rival Miner. So I not only did I improve my efficiency, but I don't think I need to go to hyper efficient uh, clocks in Rival like I was originally planning on doing because I think One Zero Miner does a good job at balancing your efficiency and your hash rate with your power use. So so far, uh, One Zero Miner is going to be the winner as long as you're okay with the spikes. On the 30 series now let's move to the 40 series which i think is super interesting as well so we're just going to show you my four card 40 or my 12 card 4060 ti rig just to show you the differences this is rigel miner right up here uh, and i was going for more efficiency more efficient settings on my 40 series and let me show you what i got inside the miner here's rigel up top and you can see i as i said in my 40 series overclocking guide i was going for ultra efficient settings and here are the efficiency settings right here. Um, you can see that I'm getting about 225 efficiency on average. I wasn't very happy with that, but I did like the low power usage of about, you know, on average, we were about 55 watts. So let me show you, I mean, one zero minor. I'm going to try not to do that a lot. But let's go ahead and show you the update with one, one zero. Now, I accidentally copied the minor settings wrong, but, and I'll show you that. Uh, after we go over all the 40 series comparisons, but I'm really happy with what I can with what I got because if you'll notice I basically got the same hash for way less watts. So we went from 64 watts or I'm sorry we went to about 50 watts on average to like 45 watts ish. Uh, I don't know if I'm doing that average right because if you can see we dropped about almost 200 watts from 734 watts on Rigel to 572 on one zero. And if you look at the average efficiency, we go from 225 to 278. So that is a huge efficiency jump right there for basically the same watts. So this was a mistake on my part because I didn't copy the overclocks exactly, but I'm really, really happy with what I have. I mean, look at these numbers, guys. They're using basically no power. And let me show you the chart to show you what I mean with all of the 40 series, but the 4090, which I do not have mining, but I would expect it just scales accordingly. 
All right, guys, here you can see the 40 series. Now you can see that with one zero, I actually meant went with a memory offset over a memory lock. Uh, you, like I said, you can see the settings right here. Uh, it was, uh, you know, the changes are, are kind of wild. Like basically my hash rates are all essentially the same on one zero. But like if we look at the 4070, the efficiency went up from 245 to 300. On the 4070 Super, it went up from three, 262 to 326. From the 4070 Ti, it went from 269 to 350. And then from the 4080, we went to from 230 to 292. I'm sorry. From Yeah. So this makes me believe that maybe my 40 series overclocks were not the best. Or maybe 1.0 is doing something different than Rigel. But look at these settings. I mean, it's it's off the chart. 1.0 is way better. Uh, again, I do think I'm going to play with my overclocks a little bit more on the 40 series. But right now, I think I want to leave these, with, especially considering how hot it is. So, so overall, guys, if you are okay with the power fluctuations from, uh, from 1.0 minor, you will notice quite uh, an efficiency improvement across the board. And... I think that 1.0 minor, as of now, the filming of this video, July 16th, 2024, is the one that you should be using for mining. But I do want to re-emphasize, re like I have already, that there are power fluctuations. So if you are running anything too close for comfort, stay on Raggle. So it's not quite the slam dunk I thought it would be, only because 1.0 has some performance issues that it needs to get fixed, and I had to reboot a few miners. But other than that, it's, it's better. Not a home run, but it's better. So I could see reasons to stay with Rigel 1.8, but otherwise I would move to 1.0. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it helped. Please like and subscribe for more content on Zealous and anything else on your home crypto mining needs. So thanks again for watching. Crewman is out.